Hello everyone and welcome to Snap Take. We have an incredibly long video for you today. This is Glazer of Snap Judgments, the official podcast of Marvel Snap Zone. We're going to look at Scar. We're going to look at Kyara and her spotlight caches. We're going to look at every spotlight cache this season and try and figure out what's worth it. Hopefully they don't change them from the data mines because they don't actually announce these. But we are going to get started. This should be everything you need to know for the upcoming Planet Hulk Marvel Snap season. But before we go any further, please hit that sub button, hit that like, hit that comment. We bring you at least three brand new decks every single weekday. The biggest giveaways of Marvel Snap, bundle guides, everything you need to get your Marvel Snap journey going, including pro tips. We help you get infinite. We help you get to high infinite. If you subscribe to us, we do our best to support you. And supporting us, at least through a subscription, is completely free. So please hit that sub button. We are in the process of the largest giveaway in all of Marvel Snap, and I'm about to get joined by a cat, so when you see a cat jump over it, don't be surprised. Um, we have our winners for the first four, but not the fifth. Uh, our winners for the first four, yesterday, Monday's video, is not going to have the winner picked until the extra night, because a lot of people watch me in different time zones late at night, so I want to give them a chance to comment so they can enter. So our winners are Emperor Minute, Otohito BG, Talisman, and Alwyn Dagdag. So please, you guys, you folks, hit me with an email at the email on this channel. The last YouTube winner and the Twitter winner, <laughs> your last YouTube winner and the Twitter giveaway winners are going to be announced in tomorrow, Wednesday's video. So make sure you check them out. All right, we also maintain the sheet if you didn't win yet. We also maintain the sheet. That's every active giveaway in Marvel Snap. You can find some really great content creators on them. Entering every single giveaway here is completely free. It's just a nice thing that we try to do for the community. And as always, shout out to our friend Banshee, who does like so much more work than me in maintaining it. He's basically taken over that whole damn thing. Questions of the day before we get to our first card. Jedi Cowboy asks if they'll ever rework Hela and suggests only the highest power. Um, they'd have to release a serious consistency piece to ever really need to do this. Fundamentally, Hela never really, or very rarely, maintains a high win rate, but often has a high cube rate, because if you stay in against a Hela that goes off, it's really, really challenging to win. That just dove behind me, sorry about that. So, given that inconsistency, I don't expect Hela to be changed. Loki is, I'm almost sure, going to be changed in the next patch, uh, I can't imagine. It's been four months of absolute bonkers. Loki being either the best deck or maybe the best deck. That's the longest for anything ever, at least straight. Thanos has been the best deck for four months, but not in a row. Um, my working assumption is Loki is losing his cost reduction. Tim Bees asks about Giganto versus Magneto and Black Knight decks, and I think Magneto is usually better. Yes, you lose the two power on a shard if necessary, but this is a Ms. Marvel meta, and if Ms. Marvel is in all these decks, then Magneto has all that extra utility. When you bring it back, you can often screw up their Ms. Marvel lanes, screw up their power by using Magneto. Chaka asks in Spotlight Caches whether Black Knight is better than Werewolf, and this question I wanted to highlight, not because it's a hard question, I think the answer right now is fairly easily Black Knight, but I don't know if that answer is going to remain the same because of data mines. Next season, Black Swan is a 2-3 on reveal. Next turn, all your ones cost zero. That seems completely broken if you can do that on turn five after playing Werewolf on turn four, or if you use uh, Zabu playing Werewolf on turn three. That's going to lead to an absolutely insanely sized Werewolf, which is going to win you, bluntly, an awful lot of games of Marvel Snap. However, right now, Black Knight is in some of the best decks. The, either the number one or number two ranked deck, depending on how things shake out in the last little bit of the season, will be a Black Knight deck. That's wild, right? Um, we've got Streamer Johnson, we've got Zuns, we've got um, Desmond, all playing these amazing Black Knight decks to really, really high ranks, to huge win rates, to consistent climbing and effect. Black Knight's a better card right now. But Marvel Snap changes fast, so it's really, really hard to make this kind of decision. So I would argue that right now you get what's good now in Black Knight. You're going to miss out on Werewolf at some point, but who knows where Werewolf is at that point. Oh, I'm really sorry, by the way. I wish I had a like better and more firm answer for you, but it seems like a lot of Marvel Snap's marketing is built around FOMO and the idea that you have to have Black Knight now to play these decks now 
and you can't plan for the future, so you might as well do things now, which is like a way to get us to spend money. I think that's really kind of shady marketing, and I don't love it, but it is the actual plan, it seems. If you'd like your questions read out in tomorrow's video, please leave them in the comments, and I'll get to them within the next couple days of videos. Remember, videos happen every single weekday and also Sunday. All right, last chance review, Sebastian Shaw. Those of you watching this in the morning, I probably should have done this yesterday, I'd be totally honest. I forgot about Shaw because Shaw is forgettable. Uh, series 5, Season Pass. When this card permanently gains power, it gains plus 2 more power, wherever this is. So, all right. First off, if you like Surfer, this card is must-have. Since they removed Werewolf from Surfer, this is a must-have Silver Surfer card. Period. End of story. Good. They moved, I mean, I guess they moved two of the best uh, Surfer cards because they mo removed both Werewolf, and then they remove Maximus. So Shaw is now the best big power answer for a Silver Surfer deck, and if you ever want to play one of those, you need to have Shaw. Plus, he's Series 5, and like it's going to take him forever to be in Spotlights and Drop, because they always take forever now with Series 5 and Spotlight, and uh, sorry, Season Pass cards, which is frustrating. The other reason to get him is if you've completed the like free portion, into the free portion of your Season Pass, the value of a Season Pass card is through the roof. We're going to talk about this in more specifics with Gladiator, uh, excuse me, with Gladiator, with uh, Scar in a few minutes. But for the time being, what you ultimately really need to know is that the Season Pass is um like insane value. It It's the best value you get in the game, bar none. The very best bundle you've ever seen. The Sugar and Spice bundle at its best can't touch the Season Pass in terms of value. So I think it's worth grabbing. But the card only goes in Surfer, otherwise it's a bad card. That could change with one card we're going to talk about later, but I don't expect it to, even with that card. Alright, our new card is Scar. Scar is the son of Hulk. Uh, Hulk out rocketed to a planet, and it was a whole thing. And then he had a baby. So, Scar is his son. Series 5, Season Pass card. Uh, 611. This costs 2 less for each of your cards that has 10 or more power. So your downside here, like the worst thing Scar is, is just a 611, which is still like perfectly fine, right? Hulk is a 612, you sometimes play Hulk as a 612, whatever. Uh, Magneto is a 612 with a better effect, great. Scar's regularly going to be a 411. 411 is the best stats you can get from a 4 outside of a completely like bonkers Darkhawk or something silly with Phoenix Force or something like that. Scar is the easiest, simplest, big power, four cost card in the game, which is going to be stellar. Cool. And sometimes you get it down to two or zero. And when you get it down to two or zero, and if we can figure out how to do that consistently, and no one knows that, don't let anyone tell you, I've got it. I'm going to get it down to two every game. No one knows that until we actually play it. That's new enough as an archetype that we can't say that. But if that's consistent, this card is going to be broken. Alright, there's only one variant currently revealed for Scar. Again, we'll see if that changes when the Season Pass is actually released. It's the one you get from the Season Pass. This is an Eduardo Francisco. Uh, no offense to Mr. Francisco, but I actually like the base art better. So, it is what it is. Alright, Scar's synergies. Lockjaw is the first one that comes to mind. Lockjaw cheats out lots of power. Um, sometimes it's going to cheat out Scar, but you're ultimately fine with that. If it doesn't, it cheats out things like Magneto, Hulk, She-Hulk, whatever. That makes Scar nice and cheap. She-Hulk, Death, and stuff that gets cheaper and is big. Death also works with Venom. If you can Venom uh, enough things and also get a um, early Death, get Death around out like turn 4 or 5, and get a, a nice big Venom along with that Death, you've got that 2 cost Scar in a nice simple way. She-Hulk can come out if you pass turn 3 or only spend 1 energy on turn 3. On turn four, which means you have a four cost scar on turn uh, five, or you can play like a Doc Ock on turn six, and then you have a uh, two cost scar. Cool. Evolutionary and double She Hulk make sense to me. Um, Evolutionary doesn't do anything to really get any of these cards cheaper. It's just a good home for um, really big, powerful cards like this one. Ebony Blade, Typhoid Mary, Century Atuma, Warpath, Namor, and Shuri. Shuri doesn't quite fit, but you get the idea are all 4-cost cards that have 10 power, which again makes Scar a 411, which is great. Um, Zabu fits with all of these, and if Zabu fits with all of these, then so does Darkhawk, and Darkhawk often, especially if you play it early, is... Oops, excuse me. Darkhawk also, if you play it early, is a, you guessed it, 410. That makes Scar cheaper. And if they're trying to eliminate Darkhawk, you've already got Scar out, and now you've replaced it, and you, they use their big removal, and you have a good chance of winning. 
Uh, Wave and Psylocke seem to make some kind of sense, at least um, feasibly, right? Like, you can wave into something like a blob. And if you wave into blob, then all of a sudden, guess what? Cheaper. Um, cheaper scar. Psylocke works really well because you can do the same basic thing, ramp into a devil dino on turn uh, on turn four, then scar is cheap on turn five, or again, you can make a super cheap scar on turn six. Kyra protects scar because getting big things out early is dangerous, so does armor, so does Cosmo. Kyra we'll talk about later. She is, just for the record, a 3-4. With the ongoing ability, or one in six cost cards can't be destroyed. That is literally the card we are giving a full review for later. You're going to see it, however, in a lot of Scar decks because they come out at the same time. So I don't want to separate them. And Scar is countered by his mortal enemies, Shang-Chi and Mobius. Shang-Chi will be stopped by those other cards, but Mobius makes him just a 6-11, which makes him a bad card. If you're not planning on getting Scar, plan to pack Mobius in as many decks as possible for the next week. We're going to feature an awful lot of these decks. If you have interest in more, come find us on the Marvel Snap Zone Discord in the podcast chat with the host section. If you buy Scar and need help with a deck, I will personally help build you one. Just hit us up. Cool. All right. Our friend Devilish, who you need to go check out on the uh, little Twitch. Why am I losing words today? It's been a day. I had to make this giant slideshow. I can't believe how late they gave us this video. All right. So, uh, Devilish, happy birthday, my friend. This is Devilish's idea for a Scar deck. This Devilish Scar deck will be played by Devilish on his birthday stream today. I will not be there for this portion, but from 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern, I'm hanging out with Devilish on the stream. So if you'd like to go check that out, just look up Devilish Snap on Twitch. Cool. All right. So this is a nice, simple Black Knight deck. It does all the nice, simple Black Knight deck stuff. It assumes that it's going to get something shonged early. It's got magic for the extra location thing, right? But then it assumes it's going to get shonged early. And if it gets shonged early, then what it can do is um, use Phoenix Force to bring it back. And then you just have like a movable infinaut or a movable scar or whatever. And that seems like it's going to be really strong, especially at the end of the game. As like a giant surprise, you've got your own shong. You've got Zabu because um, Phoenix Force, the shard, shong, Ghost Rider, all four cost cards. And this should just be a nice way to get Scar nice and cheap. This is one of the first decks I'm planning on playing with the card. Our friend Safety Blade is the next bunch of decks. Safety is literally an absolute genius at deck building. He's made multiple meta decks. Safety and W are the two people in the meta who make the most decks that get the least credit regularly. But check out our friend Safety. Uh, he writes for Marvel Snap Zone. His Twitter is unbelievable. So... This is his where to start. I'm very sad if this is meta. Um, he wrote an article about these decks, by the way, although I think I grabbed one that he didn't put in the article that I think might be even better. This is your standard ass um, Shuri Red Skull deck, right? Except because you have Scar, you can do extra shenanigans. Because you have Kyrie, you can do extra shenanigans, right? If you get um, your Typhoid or Atuma out early, especially if you get them zeroed, you can go... Um, Red Skull and Scar pretty damn easily. Like, you can go Shuri into Red Skull, and then you have a four-cost Scar that you can play with um, with something else, with, like, an armor to end the game. And that's just really strong. If you've got enough power early, this is going to be real, real good. I think this one's better, though, and this one is much scarier, because this one goes a different route. This one says, if I can go Wave into... Um, Blob into Taskmaster or Red Skull, right? I can spend my last turn because I should have priority sure as crap, right? I should, I could spend my last turn going Scar and Kyra and just saying good luck stopping me. That seems really, really strong. This, of course, also has Shuri Red Skull Taskmaster as a play pattern. It has Shuri Red Skull Blob as a play pattern. Scar is not necessary. I think this is one of the best decks in the game and I don't like it, but I think. I don't think there's any way around it. Planet Evo. Uh, I get another safety. This one's real cool. It's doing the magic double She-Hulk thing. So on turn four, you Moon Girl, if you can get two She-Hulks out, especially with Quinjet. Um, if, if you go magic three, Moon Girl four, you, get the, you skip five to two She-Hulks on turn six. Scar is now two, right? Shocker can make any of these cheaper, so on and so forth. And then you've got Kara to protect all the She-Hulks and the Scars and stuff that you can drop at the end of the game. Enjoy yourself. 
Thanos Lockjaw. This is just a cult Thanos. Uh, it's got some nice blobbiness in it. Blob being, again, just the biggest card in the game right now, the like only single lane winner we really have, whether you have priority or not. Blob should win the lane outside of everything but frickin' Shadow King, thanks to Kyra. In the meta, I assume we're going to see a lot less Shang-Chi relatively quickly if Kyra's as popular as I expect her to be. But this has a similar play pattern where you can go wave into uh, Blob, Thanos, or Magneto, and then make your Scar nice and cheap. You also have the Lockjaw shenanigans. This is likely to be one of the best decks in Marvel Snap. There's also the Destroy version, which just does the same basic thing, but doesn't run Kyra. This is my modification, because I think Venom is a good way to get nice and big. If you get the right stones in there, right? You get the right stones, um, and, I don't know, you wave out a Thanos or Death or whatever, and then you eat a bunch of other stuff with Venom, you've got two 10 power things, and then your Scar is humongous. Your Scar is humongous for two, excuse me. Leech is just a nice thing to pop out of Lockjaw. It could be literally any card. Devil Dino is probably better for this deck, but Leech is really, really strong for mirror matches. World War Black Knight. This is Safety's hella uh, discard version of it. Fundamentally, what you're doing here is you're saying whatever the hell pops out of Lockjaw is good, and then you're going to discard some of your stuff, hopefully get a shard out of it, and hella it all back, and everything is freaking humongous. It's a really simple deck. This deck is reaching critical mass in terms of goodness to harken back to our questions from earlier. Um, I think that they're getting very close to giving this deck just too many tools for the current meta. Like, because the weakness is Lockjaw sits there and um, Shang-Chi then eats this deck's lunch, right? But if that's not a weakness, then I don't know what to do. Okay. This is a Thor Lockjaw with Scar. Basically, you happen to... Um, I threw Beta Ray in here, because Beta Ray... Okay, Beta Ray is a 4-5. We're going to talk about this later. Puts a Stormbreaker, just like Thor's Mjolnir, in the deck. That's an 0-1 that doubles his power. Cool. So if you can get that going, if you get either of those cards early, if you draw them early, your Scar gets cheaper, and those things go really, really well into Lockjaw, whether they come out one way or the other. And that's the whole plan here. Make Scar cheap that way. Um, if you have to, you can go Thor, Beta Ray, Jane, and then you can play both um, Shards and Odin, and you're just going to have gigantic things. So that's pretty damn powerful, too. All right. This is our Darkhawk build. I always try and build a Darkhawk build. I think this might be decent. I'm worried about Blob. It depends how much Blob there is going to be in the meta, but this should be pretty freaking good because it basically says I've got all these high power packages and Scar is just a four cost here 99% of the time, right? Scar is very rarely, excuse me, Scar is very rarely in this particular deck going to get below a four, but this is a deck that happens to be in the market for a 411. So you're perfectly happy for that 411 that you can play on the last run game with like a Korg and a uh, Demon as necessary. So I think this is a decent home. I think this is probably a good deck, but again, Blob will keep this in check. Here's another version of Darkhawk. I decided to throw Typhoid in here because I have Enchantress. I can get rid of the Typhoid negative as a surprise. Play this on top of a Ms. Marvel from an opponent. Get rid of both of them and go to town that way. Um, this also has a Sarah, so it can do a bunch of damage if it gets Sarah and Sabu out. All these different two-cost things at the end of the game should be really good. And if I had a Typhoid out already, and or um, if I went something like Zabu into um, Darkhawk into Typhoid, right? Now I've got these big things that are getting my scar nice and cheap. Eco Hawk. This is the um ooh, this is so far from the original Eco Hawk, it's wild. Well, this was originally Eco Hawk, the one that uh this wasn't Eco Hawk, excuse me. This was Anature. I gotta remember my Eco decks. Eco's my like new favorite deck builder to anyone who's watching for the first time in a while. Eco's absolutely phenomenal and keeps making decks that I'm in love with. But this is a nice simple deck. It basically does the Sarah without the Sarah. And um, it's saying, like, hey, I would like Scar to be a 6-4 at the end of the game, so I can play Shadow Game, uh, sorry, 4-11 -11 at the end of the game, so I can play Sh uh, Shadow King or Scarlet Witch to win the game. I could also conceivably play a Demon and a uh, Stature at the end of the game to win. Am I giving up the right lane if I do this? Yeah, but sometimes that's totally fine. Let them, like, overcommit in the right lane. They tend to try and clog that lane so they don't have to deal with the Sentry nonsense. And when they do that, you have they have less resources to compete with your suddenly huge other lanes because scar with stature and demon is 12 plus 11 23 power on the last turn it's an awful lot all right 
final thoughts about Scar. Usually a 4.11, so that's great. 4.11 is top-notch stats. If he's ever less than 4.11, he's busted. If he's a 2.11, that's completely insane stats. That's like, I mean, look, it's not an original Elsa, but it's really great stats. So we're going to see a lot of Mobius for a bit, but eventually, as always, cards like Mobius cycle out of the meta. And at that point, he goes right back to being great. And his downside is a 6.11. There's nothing wrong with that. He's going to be at least good with Lockjaw, Black Knight, and High Evolutionary, I'm convinced. It's very hard for me to imagine these decks that are already good don't want another card that just fits in them. And because the only way to get him is the Season Pass, that's an extra 1,500 gold, which can become ways to get more cards by saving for big bundles. Um, it's 900 from the Season Pass and 600 from Weekend Missions, and that's incredible. And it's four extra variants if you value them at 700 each. Jeez. And then it's one less Series 5 to get later from Spotlight, so that's like fundamentally at least plus one extra Spotlight later. I think the Season Pass is totally worth it. That's my argument. Um, I personally consider this game, Marvel Snap, a subscription-based model. You can play free-to-play. The number one or two player in the world is free-to-play. But for most people, to get most of the cards, which is where a lot of the fun in the game lies for people, unless you're like trying to climb to the top of the ladder, then... This is how you do so. Cool. All right. Before we look at this month, let's keep in mind there are no skip weeks anymore. There is now the same week as the season pass. And as far as we know, going forward, the same week as the season pass, a brand new card coming out. That's the card we're going to look at and talk about. The patch will be live in a week. And so any of this is subject to change. They could decide to rip up half these cards or buff half these cards. Obviously, that would change the value. Keep it here on the channel. We do a video every day. If that happens, we'll totally tell you about it. Don't stress it. Uh, Ms. Marvel is probably the best card in the game, but she isn't in Spotlight Caches in January or February. So I really, 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 I'm assuming they're going to change her given that, or they're going to put her in the February Spotlights when they update it in the patch next week. So one of those two things is going to happen, potentially both, but Ms. Marvel is currently either the best or the second best card in the game with Loki, and they go and nerf, nerf Loki. Next month's new cards seem nuts, but the only big series fives that aren't the new cards next month are Thanos and X-23, so plan accordingly if those are cards you really, really want. We're going to look at all the spotlight caches for the next month, and then we're going to deep dive in this week so we can make informed decisions. If you'd like a ranking of every card this month, currently about 40 content creators, but by the time we're done, it's usually 50. Um, rank it. I put those, I score all those rankings, and I write an article that should be up on Marvel Snap Zone Wednesday or Thursday. Cool. Let's go. Oh, that's not it. Go away. Kyra is what we're looking for. Kyra is a one, two. That's sorry. Last time, last time's skip week. Uh, God, that's a terrible spotlight cash right stegron sucks man thing is falling out of the meta because of luke and jeff is great but like the other two are so bad all right kyra is a one two uh sorry kyra comes out on one two she is a three four series five six thousand tokens ongoing your one and six cost cards can't be destroyed so i'm totally unconvinced on this card lambie's unconvinced on this card both den and safety think it's completely broken. Everyone's hedging that this is at least pretty damn good in the right homes. It might not shake up the meta, but it's going to have a major effect. Cool. This is going to be a card that you see a lot of. Whether it's good or not, time will tell. But this card is going to be everywhere. This is a card that I expect everyone to be yelling for nerfs about, which usually means that you probably want to get it. If you're not sure if you're getting it, I'm going to say this right up front. On Friday... I give you my weekend mission decks and my updated recommendation after we've had it for a few days. And then on Monday, I always do, like we did the Shadow King at the start, I always do a last day card review. We did uh, Celine's yester in yesterday's video, if you're curious. So you don't have to make a decision today, but I think she's worth getting, probably. All right. Uh, this is the Spotlight Cash Cards. Remember that we're going to do a full review of this card later. The Spotlight Cash Cards, this is the only Kyra in the game. I don't like it very much. I'm going to be totally honest. It's kind of bland. Not that this is like an amazing character design, to be honest, but it's kind of bland. Um, I love this high evolutionary. I haven't decided if I'm getting it yet or not. It is absolutely gorgeous. This is one of the best variants in the game, but I have the hip and you never play a high evolutionary. So having a really cool high evolutionary is of limited use because the card just sits in your hand. And then we have Nebula. This is phenomenal Nebula art. 
but I have the hip, I have the last spotlight parrot, I have the season pass one, and I have the winter one where it's shooting a gun. So I have four nebulas. I don't think I need to reach for this one. We're going to, again, review the spotlight cache in more details, but I'm going to say this again up front, because every second of these YouTube videos, someone clicks off. That's just how YouTube works. High Evolutionary, if you are early or mid-series three, is one of the best cards to get. The second you have High Evolutionary, you fundamentally have a deck that you can compete with. Grab High Evolutionary if you can. Cool. On 1-9, we have Hercules. Spoiler, most people's pick for the worst card of the month. Hercules is Series 5, 6,000 tokens. The first time another card moves here each turn, move it to another location. Um, I'm pretty sure Hercules is just overcosted. If she, if he costs 3, I think he'd be great. But you want a decent amount of your move to start happening early, and he stops that. At 4-6, he is decently statted, and what he does do in a non-move deck, if he's worth playing, is he says, get your Vision and Jeff nonsense out of here. So he may have some uses, but I don't think, I think he's like the easiest skip of the month, especially because the cards he come with aren't, comes with aren't especially good. Um, I don't know if I even like this Hercules variant. Like, Hercules is kind of a goof in Marvel Comics, a lovable goof, but a goof, so I don't love this like super handsome god thing. I, again, love this werewolf. I love the comic book covers, but there's a hip coming at some point, so I don't know if I need it, and werewolf isn't really in the meta right now. And then we have this Howard the Duck list, which is Howard with the Infinity Gauntlet, and it's adorable. But again, I have both the hip and the noir, so like I'm feeling good about my Howards here. Um, I, there's two cards in the whole game I don't need variants for. Sorry, that I need variants for. I need the hip rescue, and I need any white tiger. So those aren't going to be in spotlight, so I can afford to be picky. Um, although I'm about to have more, because if there's only one variant for each of these cards, I'm not opening spotlights, then I'm not going to get the variants for this season's cards right away. I guess we'll wait. Um, I don't know. I feel like this is the easiest skip week of the month. Like, even if you want Werewolf, he's just not in meta decks. If you, like, you have to get Werewolf if you think he's going to be broken with Black Swan, but we don't know how Black Swan's going to come out. So it's super hard to recommend that. But this looks like the easiest skip week because Howard's dropping to Series 4 literally the same day as this, um, and Hercules doesn't seem to fit anywhere in the meta. Mick is our Series 4 card of the week, which means if you have the tokens and want this card and nothing else, you should buy it. So 1-1 one, one after each turn, if you discarded uh, any cards, it gains one power for each and moves. So if you Modoc, at the end of the turn, it's going to get a bunch of power for all the things you modoc and move once. Oh, just making sure that's clear. Uh, it's not an ongoing, so it has to be on the board, but it's a one cost, so it's relatively easy to fit in, especially if you're running something like Ravona with your discard. It's a good card, probably, right? Like, it's like lesser mo. It's obviously lesser Mobius. It doesn't get as much power, but look, having a 1-4, one, 1-6 one, in one of these decks is going to be very useful. Um, Again, like... I don't know what we're doing with these variants. I don't love them. Annihilus is must-have. I expect Annihilus to get hit by February, to be perfectly honest. He's a little too good, I think. Uh, he puts up Shuri-level power with a lot of disruption. No one's complaining about him yet, so maybe he won't get nerfed. But uh, he's real, real good, like one of the best cards in Snap. And I feel like people that don't get that are playing him kind of wrong, because all you really need is Sentry and Hood to make him like an absurdly powerful card. Because you play him and then you get negative 13 on the other side of the board, right? So he's a 20 power play, and then, like, that's just a lot. He's a 20 power play. Cool. Um, Phoenix Force is dropping to Series 4. If you can afford to use tokens, use tokens. The only reason to open this week at all is Annihilus, just to be clear. If you need Annihilus, Annihilus is phenomenal, and you want to play Annihilus, get this week. We'll see where the meta is at that point. But short of Annihilus, if you have Annihilus, please, please, please skip. All right, this is the card I want most. This is Grandmaster. 2-0, Series 5, 6,000 tokens. Move one of your other unrevealed cards here to the middle location, and its ability happens again. I mean, the obvious answers are like Hit Monkey and Surfer or Mr. Negative Deck, because then just that's silly. However, what's really cool here is Quinny came up with this idea. You play Wave on 5, you have to have priority. So play a bunch of priority cards. You have Wave on 5, you play this and Eliath on the left or right with no other unreveals, right? Eliath eats their stuff in the left, bumps to the center, eats their stuff in the center. GG's, enjoy yourself. This card's going to be busted in one of a thousand ways um, we, we have yet to see. Like, imagine this with Odin. If you can manage to hit Odin after a wave, right? Like, it's going to Odin, and then it's going to push either the thing you brew or another card to the middle. You can do this with Zola. 
you Zola first, which is going to push the two Panthers elsewhere, and then this pops Zola to the center, and then you get um, more Panthers. That's completely nonsense. This card's going to be incredible, I have no doubt. All right, this comes with Loki, the best card in the game, unless they do something to it, and Hitmonkey, the single card that most wants Black Swan. Please go get all three of these cards if you don't have them. I don't know how to be clear on that. Again, depending on what the Loki nerf is, I guess. My assumption is Loki is going to be around a 3-5 with no negative, but what the hell do I know? Loki could be lots of other things. This is also a gorgeous Loki variant. Although, again, I don't like the spotlight variants for the season pass cards this month, and I have plenty of hit monkeys, so I don't need this hit monkey. But that is a really cool Loki. Fade Array Bill, 130, Series 5, 6,000 tokens, Unreveal, Shuffle Stormbreaker into your deck, and Stormbreaker doubles Beta Ray Bill's power to no one. It's possible that this goes really well in the double your power deck. Um, do I know that? No, of course not. I don't think anyone knows that. But if you can run this with like a, a couple universal power bumps, and you can run this with um, Odin, and you can run this with Surfer, not Surfer, you can run this with Odin, you can run this with Shadow King, and then maybe there's something there for this deck, right? Am I sure about that? Nope. I think this is probably just a Lockjaw card. It goes in Lockjaw decks. Maybe the, uh, I get all the zero cards, and then I bounce Werewolf around and hit Monkey deck as well, but that's what this is for, and it's going to be good in those decks, if not great. It's slightly better Thor. All right. Um, these are the variants you want i think else is like nearly unplayable i really hope she gets a buff so gross this is an unbelievably good galactus is galactus meta nope you don't need galactus in any way shape or form anytime soon so you can conceivably skip because again the uh february cards are completely busted seemingly so we'll talk about them relatively soon just as a reminder of what they are i want to wait for the patch to see if any of them change before we do that though because i hate that like a lot of people, and no offense to them, right? Like, they're not doing anything wrong. They're just giving the best information we have. But a lot of people, like, will release that video this week, and then next week we'll have new information. Then they'll just re-release the video, and that's a good way to get hits. But, like, I want my information to be as accurate as I can make it to the best of my ability. So I'm going to wait until next week when the patch drops, next Tuesday when the patch drops, and then we'll look at the data mine cards for next month and the data mine spotlights for next month, because I bet you they're going to change. But, like, this is a skip, although that Galactus and this Beta Ray Bill are both damn near must-haves. All right. Now we're going to actually look at Kara. Reminder, she's an ongoing. Your 1-6 cards, cards can't be destroyed, which means, like, your Enchantresses and Rogues are going to ruin her stuff. And she's Series 5, 6,000 tokens. So she stomps out Killmonger and Shang, I assume for at least a little bit to see significantly less of those cards. Shang has plenty of other targets it could hit. Killmonger literally only kills the things this protects. Um, That's going to be... This is a very worrying card, sometimes with junk, at least potentially. Uh, she's not really going to be played in junk, but if she's on your side of the board, they can throw junk at you and you can't really get rid of it, which is mm, potentially problematic. She's going to die to, uh, her cards, the card she protects, will die to Eliath if they're unrevealed, even if they're ones and sixes, because unrevealed cards don't have costs. She raises Shadow King stocks through the roof, and Shadow King is already one of the three best cards in Marvel Snap. Ms. Marvel, Loki, Shadow King, those are the big three, just for the record. Um, Shadow King is one of the top three cards. Stock goes way up because it's the only card that's not made significantly, um, worse by this card releasing. She's great with Scar and other sixes. She's Blob's new bestie, because Blob now would only have to worry about Shadow King, not Chang chi So if you want to get that early Blob in one spot, and then if you have, like, you go Armor, um, Armor, Kyra, Wave, Blob, Taskmaster, they better have Shadow King, or they're just dead meat. Uh, Thanos has Stones and Bigs, Lockjaw Thanos especially, so there's good synergy here. High Evolutionary loves them because High Evolutionary wants to play Sunspot and Misty and often Nebula. And stuff like Rickety Bridge and Death's Domain are not a problem for these decks anymore because if as long as she's revealed, the ongoing is in effect. Those ones and sixes cannot be killed even if they're in Rickety Bridge or Death's Domain. Again, check the Discord for Marvel Snap Zone if you want a deck with her and you don't have the cards that you see here. So this is Andrew PTT. This is a Marvel Snap Zone user who creates really cool decks. So I grab a couple sometimes. This is one of them. 
This is a nice, simple, straightforward, he calls it new broken Evo. This is your standard ass high Evo list. If you get Kyra in it, your She-Hulk and Hulk can't be destroyed. That's kind of it. It does have Ms. Marvel in it. Ms. Marvel's again, one of the best cards in the game. But just having a She-Hulk and Hulk that can't be killed is going to be really, really useful for this deck. Sunspot and Misty that can't be killed is going to be really, really useful. They steal lanes. And they make you a nice cheap abomination. Then you play your nice cheap abomination win. Uh, Zombies Go Nom Nom, another creator on YouTube that you can check out, has this version, which is running Magic and Leech. Basically, you Magic on two or three, you Leech on five, and then they can't get rid of your Limbo. And then you skip a turn, and you go She-Hulk and Infinite. Somewhere around turn three or four, you play Kyra, and then even what whatever priority looks like, as long as they have Shang, that you'll be totally fine with your uh, She-Hulk, Infinite, Hulk. Also, protecting Nebula seems really good. Nebula is real strong and in the spotlight caches also this week. Kara goes American. This is again our friend Safety Blade, who's a genius. Uh, I don't know if this works. This is fundamentally here because it says uh, I can play all my Ultron dudes and there will be threes everywhere. Fills the board with threes with Patriot or fours with Patriot Blue Marvel, and you can't stop me. I don't know. That seems reasonably good. You can do that all behind a visible woman to protect from ongoing hate. You can run Killmonger to mess up your opponent's stuff and not your own stuff at that point. All that's really good. I'd personally run some Mystique in here, but whatever works for you. Cosmo offers a little protection, so on and so forth. I think this is probably good. Like, is this going to be able to go over the top with some of the things in the meta? I don't know, but it's going to be at least good. This is Teebs Zoo. Teebs is a Twitch streamer who you should check out. They're awesome. This is a deck I had a lot of success with. I basically took out armor, put in Kyra. I took out some other card and threw in Goose because you can't deal with crap like Blob with this deck. It just goes too big for you. So you just try and win two lanes. Kyra says, I don't care about your Killmonger. This deck might just be good because Kyra should chase Killmonger out of the meta. And then you can run something else there like Shadow King and just be totally fine. But you've got two one fours a 1-5, and Nebula, who gets up to whatever it is, Echo, who ruins opponents, Squirrel Girl, who with Kazar and uh, Blue Marvel, is one energy, and then each of her tokens becomes threes. So that's three, six, seven, eight for her, and then she gets the plus two, so nine, ten on just that body, which is pretty damn good. Um, This ran Doom. That was the last card that was cut. So, like, if Killmonger disappears, which is reasonably likely, you just throw Doom back in. Shauna is phenomenal in this deck. This is the best deck Shauna's ever been in. Cannot be moved or destroyed. We're back to our friend safety. This basically says, I'm going to get Blob out. And if I can do the Blob Taskmaster thing, that's great. And if I can't, I'm going to do a Blob Living Tribunal thing. Again, will Kyra be needed is my real question. Is Sean just going to disappear from the meta for a while because this exists? It's not hard to see, right? At which point, I don't know what we do about Blob. Because a blob here will be um, 40, 60, and then that just gets spread all over the place. Um, Phoenix Force always worries about keeping that damn human torch alive. Well, not a concern. So you kill it nice and early. And then when you Phoenix Force it, it is perfectly safe. Because of Kyra, it cannot be Shanged. It cannot be anything. You get that giant Phoenix Torch that you can move, Force that you can move around. You have magic for an extra turn for that nonsense. You don't have to play any other cards, and then you can drop an Infinite out too. Enjoy yourself. Infinite's also going to be protected by that. You guessed it, Kyra. We also obviously have the multiple man combo because why the hell would we not? I think this is actually going to be really cool. And I got to show it to safety. I need to remember to show it to safety because he's the only other person that loves Phoenix Force as much as I do. We have a Black Knight Hella deck. This one doesn't bother with Scar. It instead just says, um, I can discard whatever I want. Like, most of the discard here, all the discard here is targeted. Obviously, be careful with Lockjaw, but it's otherwise targeted. You get something discarded, you can potentially get a shard, and win with like a shard and a blob, you can win by discarding stuff and playing Hella. You can win by just getting some big stuff out of Lockjaw, protecting with Kyra, and then dropping blob. Lots of ways to win with this deck. It's going to be really strong. Thanos Kyra, again a similar version of Thanos to earlier. This one is based off the Lampy Cam one, I believe. I could be wrong. I think this is actually fairly close to the Cam one. Den made this exact version. I think Den's uh, responsible for Echo here. It basically has the same logic as all these other decks, except this one doesn't run 
Lockjaw says Kyra is going to protect my stones. It's going to make it so Echo is a nightmare for ongoing decks. They can't do anything to deal with it. And now I've got Blob that can't be killed. And if you've got Blob that can't be killed, that's a lane that's one. As long as they don't Shadow King you. So I think that that's powerful enough to run with. Wave is going to be real, real good in this deck, by the way. So first, do you like the decks Kyra slots in? These aren't my style decks. Uh, well, the, the Teebs one is. But I don't really like to run a lot of six costers, although I do love Thanos. So, like, do you like these decks? Do you have Blob and, like, actually play him? If you play a lot of Blob, then Kara is basically a must-have. She's going to shake up the meta whether you have her or not. So the question I want to ask in the game is do you have to actually play her? Is her presence enough to make the cards that she's uh, making disappear disappear? Because at some point when Mobius came out, like, all the Sarahs and Mr. Negatives and stuff disappeared, right? The decks that were good enough to win anyway, like, just ran Mobius, but, like, then Mobius slowly got cut, but those other decks couldn't come back just because the threat of the existence of Mobius. Does Kyra do that? She should be really good against Destroy, like, Destroy decks that want to run, like, Killmonger and Ruin Your Stuff are real sad that Kyra exists, um, but the meta is largely ongoing. There's that Hell Enjoyer deck that's everywhere, and she doesn't really affect that. She doesn't protect uh, six costs from ongoing hate, so, eh. Um... Three costs can be awkward for tech, because like Mobius and Cosmo teach us that. It's playable, but it's more awkward than the very easy to slot in two costs, which leads us to wait until Friday to see whether you need to play her or whether her presence does the job for you. Cool? Other spotlight cards. First is High Evolutionary, Series 5, 6,000 tokens. At the start of the game, unlocks the potential of your cards with no abilities. Wasp gets on reveal, give negative one to an opposing card here. Misty Knight gives, um, if you have extra energy, she gives another random card on your side, plus one energy. Shocker is a, um, gives the leftmost, whatever, the oldest card in your hand, negative one cost. Cyclops, if you have any extra energy at the end of the turn, takes two opponent cards and gives them negative one energy each. Thing is an on reveal that gives three enemy cards with the location, negative one energy. Abomination for each card the opponent has played with negative energy costs one less, so it's very, very, very easy to get Abomination down to a two-cost card or so. And Hulk, as long as he's in hand or on the board, gets plus two power for each energy um, unspent. High Evo. This is our standard ass high Evo list, um, the regular deck. Right, like this is just saying, I can go Scorpion and Cyclops and Thing and Spider Woman to give negative stuff, and if I can give you enough negative stuff, then I can play an Abomination and a Hulk and win the game. It's a really powerful deck, and it's really simple. Armor offers you some protection from Hulk. Abomination reminder is Shang proof. Um, you want to protect your Sunspot and Misty here. Another reason for armor. All good. Another High Evo. This is uh, our. Lockjaw version. This stopped existing, but it was one of the best decks in Marvel Snap for at least a little while. For at least a little while, when we did our top decks in Marvel Snap with Lambie on the podcast last week, check it out on Marvel Snap Zone's YouTube. This was one of the lists. Um, I mean, not this exact version, but uh, Lockjaw was one of the lists with Evo. This is a really, really strong list. Thor and Odin are great. All this stuff is really powerful. It cheats out high power cards. This is a really solid home for Scar, except that. You're unlikely to get quite powerful enough, but whatever. Um, this is a very good list. I think that this is worth playing. Ivo is really good here. You can hit infinite with this. This is our she not list. Some people call this in she not. I don't really care. This one's running Mobius over Cosmo, which has some good and some bad. Uh, I think Echo is a better one drop right now than Nebula because of all the ongoing everywhere. And Echo should be really good. And again, I don't expect much Killmonger everywhere. So that should be nice. Um, and basically what you do is you magic two or three, you leech on four, sorry, you leech on five, skip, and then she hulk and either hulk or if not, and you win the game. It's our classic deck. Cool. Our next season pass card is Nebula, or excuse me, spotlight cash card is Nebula. 1-1, one, one, series five, 6,000 tokens. Each turn your opponent doesn't play a card here, plus two power, except the turn you play this. If they don't play a card there once, she's above rate. If they don't play a card there twice, she's phenomenal. Kyra makes her harder to deal with. She's going to be really good. All right. 
She also goes in high evo. This is our standard high evo. Um, she's best in the lockdown -y versions because if your opponent, opponents cannot play in a lane, guess what? Nebula is going to grow. That's all this is. The three ones are really great here. This is our Ronin lockdown. This is uh, fairly similar to the Lambie list that he's been touting lately. Except it runs Master Mold, who I'm not sure is a good card, but whatever. Um, nice and simple. You have Nebula here because in a Storm lane, again, she can get really big. She also can pull power away from that um, the lane where you eventually end up storming. It's all good. You can also get use her to like call things to a location, and then if you're ahead in other locations. It's easier to alive. It's a powerful card because it affects how your opponent plays cards and where they play things. This is yet another Nebula. Um, this is using a little move package along with um, just some high tempo things trying to get priority. And Nebula again, it goes with Storm, goes with high tempo, get power things. Nebula's really, really. So should you open this week? If you need high evolutionary, open no matter what, especially if you're early to mid series three. It alone is one of the rare cards that just gives you access to a new deck the instant you're in series three. Nebula is one of the very best in the game. It just fits in as a one cost card. So please grab Nebula if you can. Um, although hopefully you got Nebula at least in that bundle. That will not count as getting Nebula. You still have to get base Nebula at some point. Both are better with and fit Kyra. Nebula can't be destroyed with Kyra. Evolutionary gives you Hulk. And one of Evolutionary's key cards is She-Hulk, both of which are cost six. Scar will go in high Evolutionary, which is a six cost card. Kyra will protect it, even if its cost is dropped. If you need any of the... If you need either Evolutionary or Nebula, Nebula I'd open for all three. If you need just Kyra, I'd still wait. But buy Scar. That should be B-U-I, not buy. But by Scar, trust me. And hopefully we're cool. That's it. We're just going to quickly thank our patrons and say goodbye for the day. We got models, pretty chill, Father Newman. Gotta check out Father Newman's YouTube, just for the record. Inc., No Flex, Mandatory Burnout, Matt Conduit, Josh Apodaca, Rob Silverman, Matt H., Rob Rivern, Robert Rivern, excuse me, Abigail Gieslin, Direwolf, Ocularis, J.D. McDonald Ninho, who's a very cool dude, and of course, the homie, Min, who I talk to every day. Although, in fairness, I talk to almost everyone here every day. If you're on that Patreon, I'm very active posting things talking. If you are not on the Patreon, please feel free to check it out. Uh, hopefully you join. Roy and I are reviewing at length every single card this year. Re sorry, I guess last year at this point. Released in 2023. Um, as soon as I'm done on Devilish's stream, reviewing every card of the year. It's a Patreon exclusive podcast. Only way to get it is to get on the Patreon. We've got a $1 tier, a $5 tier, and a $10 tier. Check it out. If you're doing the $1 tier, you're paying less than a cent an episode because we release so damn many episodes. Cool. I think Scar is worth getting. If Scar is not worth getting today, there's going to be a time when a 611 that gets cheaper is better. That's just how Marvel Snap works. If he is bad, Ready for his cost reduction to be unstoppable. Just mentally prepare yourself. Hit that sub button. Hit that like. Hit that comment. Appreciate the support. See you tomorrow with another Snap Take. I got the coolest decks for already. See you then. Peace.